This is a demonstration of the deformable components refresh in NX2406, the June 2024 release of NX. With NX2406, we have uh, modernized the infrastructure underneath deformable components. Uh, these started out as, uh, for the last many, many years, <laughs> as a, a cousin technologically to uh, user-defined features. We used a user-defined feature. Uh, to store the deformation. Deformable components are a, a unique animal inside an X that, that provides the ability for a component to take on a new shape when it's uh, installed within a parent assembly. It takes on a unique shape uh, than when it's installed within a parent assembly. The, uh, the deformation only takes place in the context of the installation. So the original as manufactured shape is not affected by each specific usage. And to make that happen, Again, the deformation is stored in the target assembly uh, in a package that, again, historically has been uh, been related to a UDF. Uh, as we've created the new feature template concept a couple of years ago in NX2206, we uh, started migrating uh, deformable components forward as well. And we've completed that here now in NX2406. So we'll see how that works. So this is a classic deformable components assembly here. <laughs> right now we have a compression spring over here that's uh, underneath the blue heading going down to the bottom there. There's also a hose here, of course, that's going across the top. And you can see there that the hose uh, is taking on this shape here and there's a place for another one over here that's uh, another spline in here. You'll notice with the hose that this, this one is uh, is this shape. If we come and, and open the original here, you'll see that it was designed in a different shape entirely. Uh, it was designed in this shape, right? And of course the, the design involves uh, a, a tube uh, that going on a, a particular, in this case a spline, and that, that definition is stored here in the, um, uh, the, the fact that it's deformable is stored here in the original component, right? And this particular one uh, is already uh, using the new framework. And so we'll see there that we have the ability to create a dialog here that will um, select here that host center line. You'll notice that in this new dialog that we're not using the historical kind of white box, uh, resolve references box that we, we've had in deformable components and, and uh, user-defined features for many years. We're using now in the modern framework selection widgets that are more consistent with other dialogs inside uh, NX. In fact, exactly consistent with, with other dialogs inside NX. So the interaction here will be more familiar for, uh, for end users. Um, so with that, uh, this doesn't need to be open uh, when we do this here, but um, as we go to add one of these, you'll notice in the context of the assembly part here that there again is an instance of this feature that sits inside the assembly. That, and again, this is storing the local deformation here for, for this flexible hose and for this spring. Uh, the spring here is, instead of being based on a, a spline, is, is one that uses a numerical input. So this particular one is uh, actually using a distance measurement there. You can see the distance expression in there um, and that, that it's referring to. That's measuring the distance here between the underside of the blue part and the, the base there. And this is length two, LEN two, and there's a, a length one on the other side here that I'm gonna use in just a minute. <laughs> So, so what we can do here, for instance, if we want to add another one of these here, we have that compression spring here, right? Is we can add a component and say, I want to grab that compression spring, that same one here, and add another instance of this to this assembly, okay? As I do that, it's going to, it's going to ask me for uh, constraints for where this is going to go. I'm going to tell it that I want it to align with the bottom right there and align with the, the center axis right there. And this now is here in its uncompressed state, right? It started to position it in the assembly. And uh, and here as we say, okay, it's going to ask us now for the local deformation, deformation input. And again, this one is driven by that expression that's there's a measurement that already exists in this component here, or in this assembly, that measures from the, the, the bottom of the hole here to the underside of the blue part. And that, again, is at length one uh, there. So I can type in that length one, and, and that should uh, grab our length one and uh, install that at the appropriate size, right? Now you'll notice that 
this one's this one's longer than this one, right? But they're they're the same part in here. You'll notice they're packed over here as, as two of these. And again, the local deformation is stored in the part navigator. So this deformation and this deformation are stored independently here for the two deformations. Similarly for the hose, right? We have the flexible hose here. We can come and add a new hose and let's grab that guy. And similarly here, as we do that, it'll ask us in this case for a geometric reference. Last one was an expression. This one's a, a geometric reference and uh, it's placed it out here temporarily. And as we go and select a center line and tell it where it should go, then that hose can come in. And again, you'll notice that these are two of the same component, right? The same hose. Um, again, we saw that, that that was designed in a completely different uh, geometry, right? This shape. Uh, similarly, we saw that the uh, spring's original uncompressed size was, was quite a good bit bigger than both of these. And of course, uh, if we, we move, for instance, the component that, that these, this measure is related to and, and these hoses are connected to, move that a bit, for instance, you'll notice, that, of course, that, that everything comes along for the ride and, and uh, updates associatively there. Okay, that's a, that's a nice one. So very simple example of those guys. Um, again, bringing that into our um, feature template framework gives us that ability, excuse me, to um, have modern selectors here, right? Uh, a more familiar interface, a more familiar workflow for, for uh, users. Uh, let's look at another example that's an O-ring installation here. So for instance, uh, here I have a couple of uh, different places where I can, can put this O-ring. Let's um, actually open up this guy. We'll take a look at this. Let's open that part. And as we look at this here, this is an O-ring here that's a, a specific uh, manufactured diameter and size. And uh, you'll notice that it's round, <laughs> as you might expect, right? Uh, hence the name. <laughs> And uh, as we go to install this, of course, this may take on a different shape as we put it into the context of this, this installation here, right? This is a somewhat common one that goes around a, a square shaped port here. And, uh, and similarly, this one's gonna act like the hose, right? As we go to add this component, we'll go and grab that O-ring and say, okay. And as we do that, this one also is gonna ask us for a centerline curve here. So we can do that, select that centerline curve that's using tangent curves rule there to find all those tangent curves together. And as we do that then, that can take on the shape of that, uh, that installation. Um, similarly, I have another part over here that has a little different shape. This one has kind of a D-shaped uh, uh, profile there. But as we add that same O-ring here, uh, we can do that. And this one again will ask for the center line and we'll get this center line instead, right? Now, um, a couple of things to notice here. Uh, again, we have our original installation here. Uh, I can grab actually this one. Let's line these up here just so we can see them a little better. <laughs> and our O-ring as well, right? We can grab our O-ring and drop that in here too. So we've got all three of these visible. Again, the original is still round. This is in the original as design shape. Uh, this one's taken on the D shape. This one's taken on the, the rectangular shape. And again, this O-ring is the, the same one, right? That we're looking at here in, in that context and in this context here and in, in the original as design shape, right? Which is pretty cool. Uh, for components like this, uh, this is another new thing uh, that, well, that part of this behavior is new. Part of this is exactly how it's worked for a long, long time. Um, but as part of this, uh, this, this component, of course, has mass, right? So if we come in and turn on our, our mass properties panels here, we can start to look at uh, what's going on with the mass of this. So you'll see it has a, a small mass, right? Very, very small mass out there. Tiny little piece of rubber. <laughs> and, uh, and as we look at these assemblies, you'll notice here that it has the same mass in this assembly and in this one here, it's gonna look a little different actually uh, because this one is actually an inch assembly. So this component is an inch part, this assembly is an inch assembly, 
and uh, and we can take that millimeter o-ring and just drop it in there and that's just fine right <laughs> we can use these nicely across mixed unit assemblies without any muss or fuss there and um, and you'll notice here that uh, again the mass is preserved this this kind of deformable component is one where again we've manufactured it in a particular size and and we're not changing that fundamentally as we install it in these different places we're maybe stretching it a little bit or compressing it a little bit as we go into into place there but very intentionally it has the same mass in, in all of these installations here i think in the inch part i think the uh down here it's it's going to show us uh the the default uh pounds pounds down here for the mass uh pound mass uh but up here in the uh, assembly navigator we've chosen to turn on the kilograms column and that's okay <laughs> so we see that same uh that same mass up here right um in this part with nx2406 we can now choose that behavior right so if i want to edit this definition of this uh, this particular one, I can come to the part where it's defined and double click to edit this. Now, you'll notice that uh, in this particular um, assembly, uh, yeah, actually in this part, this, this is the new uh, an updated one. And because it's a new and updated one, we can edit it easily. <laughs> if you've worked with deformable components before, coming and editing these was a challenge in the past. Uh, but now as we double click that definition, it'll take us right into Template Studio Author and we can go and work on that uh, that dialog there, for instance, right? In this particular one, relative to mass, you'll notice here that mass properties behavior now is a thing that we can specify for deformable components. So in this case here, we want this to be one that is a deformable component with a fixed mass, right? This is again a part that we're gonna manufacture in one shape, we're gonna install it, and it'll bend and stretch potentially a little bit as we put it into shape, put it into place, yeah, but it's not gonna change the mass. Now. Uh, I won't go into it in this video, but but we also have added in NX2406 the ability to use uh, deformable components as a kind of stock material uh, out there with a variable mass. And this is a, kind of an off-brand usage, used to be <laughs> an off-brand usage of, of deformable components that, that many people have, have done over the years and have wanted us to be able to vary the mass uh, with, with these. And so we've, we've enabled that here with NX2406. This is, uh, again, kind of a new uh, making this official, right? That you can do this here for things like um, long, usually, usually stock materials that they're gonna get cut to size. So this is sometimes used for hoses and, and wires, sometimes used if you're not doing routing. <laughs> um, if this is uh, also used for things like uh, trim molding, for instance, or two by fours, or steel beams, or, or things like that, where you've got a constant cross section, and uh, and you've used the deformable component parameter to vary the length, for instance, and, and in those kind of cases, you want the the mass to vary with the length out there. So we've we've enabled that at least here in NX2406. Uh, this particular instance, of course, we're using a, a fixed mass. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, I hope you find that useful. Uh, again, this is bringing uh, deformable components forward from the uh, user-defined feature base here into the feature template world uh, as we go forward here in NX2406. Again, hope you find that useful.